What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got a very special custom knife overview to do with you guys. Uh, this is the Robert Carter and Nick Chuprin custom MK1 RC. Long name, <laughs> have some notes off to the left to make sure that I get this right. This knife, number one, this is one of the more expensive knives that I've ever shown on the channel. So very excited about this. Um, but uh, it was sent for uh, overview by my good friend at Spirited Whiskey, a name that a lot of you should be familiar with. Give that man a follow on Instagram. It is because of people like him that I am able to bring you guys daily knife content. Thank you very much. Uh, as usual, I will remind everybody, if you're watching my channel because you've got the itch, you can pull down the description to the video you're watching right now to find my Amazon store, my uh, merch store if you want to pick up some Metal Complex merch, uh, my Patreon if you want to support the channel, and my sister channel, Silent Complex. Yes, I have a second YouTube channel. Um, I bet you can guess what it's about. There's also tons of links, you know, for individual knives here, but if you are looking to do um, some browsing, um, I do have this nifty little uh, storefront set up where... Everything has been nicely categorized out. If you just want to know all the stuff that I recommend, bam, you can see it right there. Best budget knives, fixed blades, EDC gear, knife maintenance stuff, ZT knives in general, Benchmade knives in general, a whole bunch of stuff. So if you've got an itch that needs to be scratched, check out that Amazon store. Anyways, let me pull this back up here. I tossed the uh, iPad down and I am definitely going to need it. Um, to make sure that I get things right. So normally I don't do, like none of my reviews are scripted. But when it comes to custom knives, I've got two rules. One, I try to get everything, you know, I, I want you guys to have the details because these are not like, these are not just standard, regular high-end production knives, right? Those are really nice, but there's a lot of special stuff that goes into this, a lot of special sauce, and I want to make sure I get all that special sauce correct. So I have to have this pulled up here. So anyways, uh, Mr. Whiskey has provided me with some information here. Um... Uh, Mr. Carter did the uh, hand ground um, blade on here, and uh, Mr. Shuprin did the uh, handles and final fitment um, for uh, um, uh, most of the uh, collaborative project here. That's, those are the details that was given to me that were given to me um, by Spirited Whiskey. Just so everybody knows, let's go ahead and get a measurement on this guy. Uh, overall length from tip to scale coming in at a surprising seven and a half inches, maybe just shy of seven and a half inches. It certainly seems like a bigger knife than that. Uh, blade length is coming in at three and a quarter. Your cutting edge is actually coming in just a hair over three inches. Really surprising size. It feels more like an eight inch knife, but is actually under that. Let's do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall, so you can see there. Uh, I don't want to say substantially smaller, but definitely smaller. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Uh, the Ritter Hogue's coming in at 8 inches. Now, see, this is what's weird to me, because if I were to, when I picked this up, I was like, oh, it's, it's about the same size as the Ritter Hogue. It actually isn't, but it just feels like a bigger knife than it is, without being, you know, super bulky. Uh, and last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Spyderco Para 3 is coming in at seven and a quarter, surprisingly closer to that one than anything else. How's the action on this guy? Ridiculous, ridiculous. I say this a lot, guys, but, so there's a difference between completely fall shut on like a budget knife or a production knife and frictionless, even when it's not falling shut on a custom knife. This has the feeling of, okay, I'm going to hybridize this for you. Imagine you have the Crisco glassy smoothness, the hydraulic smoothness, if you will, of a Chris Reeve knife, right? But you add in more of what you might get with a uh, bag custom, you know, that glassy smoothness mixed with the false shut action, but you keep the solidity, right? Without gaining any friction. That's how this feels. I hope that that's descriptive. Uh, if for anybody who wants a short version of that, that might drive the point home a little better, it feels incredibly luxurious, right? It feels really, really good. Um, on top of that, you have no double clutch because of the positioning of the flipper tab. The flipper tab is nicely knocked down in all areas, and the flipping action is awesome because there's a nice heavy detent. It snaps. I love that feeling. I'll let you guys take a look here. Click. Nice clicky sound and then the snappy action love that it's really 
really great. I appreciate it. So you guys know how I do these custom knives. I don't do reviews. I do overviews for two reasons. Number one, custom knives tend to be uh, really expensive. So it's really, it's kind of silly of me to be like, I do or don't recommend this knife based on, you know, all that goes out the window when you find out that, you know, in this case, this knife's well over a thousand dollars, right? So this is going to be more of a look how beautiful this is, look how well made this is, isn't this interesting kind of thing, right? Now, for those of you who are actually interested in purchasing a knife of this caliber, I'll give a few thoughts here or there, but I don't generally critique other people's custom work because while the utilitarian nature of a folding knife or bladed object is, I'm sure, taken into consideration during the creation of this, there are other elements, right? There's more art, there's more craft that goes into it, right? The maker puts their own personality into it. So I'm not going to judge that. This is clearly a work of precision art that happens to be a functional bladed object. Wow, look at Metal Complex's vocabulary. Ooh, okay, anyways... Um, some more information on this particular one. The one that we've got here is special, uh, as Robert Carter did the final fitment as well as his special black titanium finish. This is something that is apparently specific to Robert Carter. Yes, there are other black titanium finishes out there. This one is unique, apparently. Uh, Robert also, um, did a special anodizing, uh, making this one kind of a... Uh, uh, a, a one-off collaboration piece. So that's really interesting. The blade steel on this guy is Nitro V at 63 HRC. Here's what I found out about Nitro V. You remember that uh, Jim Skelton um, fixed blade that I, I showed you guys um, that was AEBL and I essentially said it was like stainless 52100 but with better edge stability or roughly the same edge stability but you have stainless properties. Okay, the way that this is described is like, take 14C28N, don't cringe, I know that that steel is generally found on budget knives, but add vanadium to it, right? And then you uh, essentially imagine a steel that has equivalent edge stability as 52100, like AEBL, and is also stainless. So take all of those things together, then harden them to 63 Rockwell. It's really difficult for me to wrap my head around that but uh, the the final outcome is obviously a very performance oriented uh blade that's got some serious edge stability plus stainless qualities uh and plus edge retention at 63 rockwell uh that's as much information as i can give you guys because i'm not a metallurgist um but very 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 interesting um Let's go ahead and uh, I want to give you guys kind of a carry profile uh, demonstration here. So up against the Spyderco Para 3 and PM2, two knives that have, in my opinion, very awkward carry profiles that nobody ever really complains about. You can see there, even with a flipper tab, it's less obtrusive than both knives. How about in terms of thickness? Uh, it's, a, eh, it's a smidge thicker than a Spyderco Para 3, including the pocket clip. I do not want these knives touching. Uh, no, it's actually thinner than the Para 3. Now, I know this is an aftermarket clip, but that aftermarket clip is essentially the same um, uh, height as a, as a standard Spyderco clip. So I don't think that uh, anybody is really going to have a problem in terms of carry profile. Uh, on the inside here, by the way, we are running on ceramic caged bearings, but on the inside, you can see there is no milling. These are solid titanium scales. So there is going to be a little bit of added heft to this guy, um, you know, considering the overall uh, length of it. Let's go ahead and weigh it here real quick. Overall weight. Oh, well, there you go. 124 grams. Um, how about we do, um, well, that's not going to work. <laughs> Hang on, everybody. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Units. Oh, it was already on ounces. Oh my gosh. Amateur hour. Here we go. Ounces, my goodness. Okay, an understandable 4.34 ounces. Is that going to be heavier than what most people are used to for the overall length? Yeah. Is it going to be busting out anybody's pockets, right? C creating, you know, holes because of the denseness and, and the, the, the mass of it? No, it's not. Um, that's, that's just not an issue. I understand a lot of people like to go by the whole ounce and inch thing, but to me, four and a quarter, four and a half ounces is four and a half ounces. You know, it's really not that much. Carry profile is great. I don't have an issue with it. Um, let's get a close-up look at 
the um, handle here. Look at those micro milling lines. I love textured titanium. And this special black titanium finish is a little more special than the uh, finishes that I see on standard black titanium. You can see there the light really bending around this peak right here and also dancing off these little micro milling lines. Uh, it's just beautiful. We obviously have a, um, what looks like a, it's like a black Timascus pivot collar or well, I guess very similar to what uh, other materials that I've known to be called black Timascus look like. Um, in any case, extremely beautiful. Just ex extremely, extremely beautiful. I gotta be honest here, the entire knife is very appealing to me in terms of, I very much enjoy simplicity in the lines, but what I enjoy even more is simplicity in the overall silhouette and then complexity in the fine details of the knife. And this is achieved, this is perhaps one of the best examples of a knife that achieves that thoroughly. I really like this. The only other time I have ever seen a variant of this knife was on Dr. Uh, Dr. Frankie's channel. Uh, and I, I love Dr. Frankie. Have you guys ever, surely you guys have watched him. Uh, his channel's awesome. You wanna see stuff that you don't get to see like anywhere else, um, check out his channel. Uh, but that's the only reason I had any, even a remote idea about what this was or who Mr. Carter was. Um, but really cool. You can see there the uh, insignia uh, on the blade. Uh, very beautiful. It actually does have depth to it. I can feel it. Um, this is a, uh, I, I guess you'd call this a high belt satin finish. Um, the flats actually appear to be hand rubbed, right? Because the lines are going horizontal. And then the rest of the blade has those nice, uh, belt lines on it. It's, it's just fantastic. As far as, I mean, I'm not a Tanto guy. I'm not a Tanto person, but that is just stunning. And I think the part that does it for me is this notch right here. If you guys are wondering, is that sharp? Is that, a, I mean, you know, if you're going to take this knife and you're really going to bear down on it, I think it'd be fine in your bare hands for a little bit, but eventually it's going to dig into your thumb. Does that matter? No, it doesn't. Um, it is a good lock in position. Uh, with gloves, uh, I don't think you'd have a problem with that. I think what really matters is how amazing it looks. In, in the case of this knife and the caliber that it's in, that notch up there, it just, it gives it this snout, this aggressive looking snout. And in, uh, in combination with the swedge up top and the aggressive nature of the Tanto, and you can see that it is actually compound ground. We have hollow and then flat here. It's just beautiful. It's ridiculous. Um, I think actually these are the collaborative um, logos right there. Give you guys a look at both. You can see here that there is some chamfering going on. And even though this little part right here is a little bit sharp, um, up here, not much to speak of. In fact, that area has been nicely knocked down too. You can see it's just barely catching my fingernail there. Really, really beautiful blade. I I'm a big fan of that. Um, I don't really want to touch this blade with my calipers, but I don't know the exact thickness. I'm going to say it's pretty similar to a uh, pair of three, so about 145 thousandths or so, maybe 140 thousandths. Um, the titanium has been very nicely chamfered all the way around. There is absolutely no um, no pointiness, no sharpness all the way around. You can see there, there are no, there's no hint of body screws, right? There's just the lanyard hole. Then we have a beautiful, let me go ahead and wipe my, once again, wipe off my fingerprints. We have a beautiful uh, anodized, uh, Timascus, I believe that that's what that is. It's dark, but yeah, Timascus backspacer, just stunning. Then we've got the two screws that go into the body. And I believe, let me check my notes here. I believe that, um, that is actually, yeah. Oh, here's the exact name of the Timascus. It's actually called, um, it says scales are full titanium micro milled. A backspacer clip and pivot collar are all Nichols fat Timascus. So there you go. That's what that's called. Now, uh, Mr. Whiskey, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you said something about the, with the handle screws being hidden on the show scale, that made this one kind of special. Um, I don't know that for sure. I, that's just in my memory, but uh, for whatever reason, that's sticking in there. So that's interesting either way. What I really like is that these screws back here appear to be T8 as well as the pivot, if not T10. So if I were going to take this apart, I'd be appreciative of that. But I got to be honest with you, if this were mine, I wouldn't dare take it apart. 
I wouldn't touch it with a tool. Um, take a look at the pocket clip. While it is a little skinny, I gotta say that this pocket clip does seem to go with this design. And that uh, Fat Time Mascus just looks ridiculously beautiful up against the, um, the sort of semi-reflective, though matte black of this um, black titanium that he's got going on, especially with those milling lines. It's just wonderful. You can see there is uh, no steel lock bar insert, not that it's needed, and that the knife is locking up at, let me go ahead and give it a, a real flip here. Knife is locking up very early, though I gotta say, let me go ahead. Sorry, I'm gonna check the blade, but I'm gonna hold on to it. Yeah, extremely solid. Um, nothing, nothing that I would be concerned with there. Just enough room to engage that lock bar there. You can see a little bit of room to be cut out. Um, this is just wonderful. This is a knife that I could flip over and over and over again. Every single part of this knife is so precision. I mean, I would, I could easily mistake this if it weren't for the Timascus pivot collar and pivot um, and the the uh, you know the little details. Right, I could easily mistake this as something machine made right? But this is a full custom piece and it's just amazing to me. Um, this is one of my favorite knives that I have ever handled and I, I think I that was probably evident in the unboxing, the original unboxing of this knife. It's, it's probably been evident in live streams and Knife Guy episodes where this has made a few appearances. Um, I've told Whiskey that I just, there's something about the lines on this knife. There's just something about this that is just so stunning and so beautiful and so pure, right? Um, every now and then a knife comes along and the lines just do it for me. Or And I think all of us kind of understand what that feels like or what that looks like for them. Um, but uh, this knife is doing it for me. This is awesome. Um, the only thing that kills it for me <laughs> is the price. Because it's just one of those knives that I can't afford. It's not like like my the, the price range that I tend to stick to is the only price range, you know, that is like... Uh, that I would use to define a good knife. No, there are plenty of people who regularly spend this type of money on this type of knives, and I would imagine it's fully justified. And I'll tell you what, if you've got the money to spend on this and you get it, you're going to be happy with it. Uh, right now, I'm going to tell you, if you are seeking out a Carter Custom Knife, right? You're looking for something like this, and you're prepared to drop serious money, are you going to be happy with the final product, the action, the attention to detail, the precision nature of the knife all the way around. Yes, uh, definitely. This is an, now I haven't actually spent my own money on this, but I could, I'm, I'm trying to imagine if I had, and I don't feel like buyer's remorse would be part of the equation for me. Uh, if you're wondering here, prices on MK1 RCs such as this one, now this is a specific variant, they tend to run between 1100 and 1600, depending on specs. Uh, the one that we're looking at here is about $1,500 direct from uh, uh, Mr. Carter. Now, secondary market, price, market prices, I have no idea. But yeah, we're looking at a very, very expensive knife. Uh, in any case, though, this was a blast to look at. I've had this knife for a long time, and I'm sure, Spirited, you are ready to get it back. Um, it's been well over a month since I unboxed it. Um, and the additional time span is due to the fact that I started pre-recording stuff way in advance so the gaps between those two videos are not quite as long as it seems but in any case this was really really fun to review and i'm, I'm honored to actually get my hands on something like this so uh mr whiskey thank you so much for sending your baby along for all of us to enjoy guys i think that's going to be pretty much it for today's custom knife overview if you enjoyed this video of course like i always say please leave a like if you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.